Hey everyone, when we watch replays of lower elo players or have our experts play on smurfs, we have noticed a reoccurring theme. In lower elo, especially laning phase, you guys make the game so much harder than it needs to be, which is a problem when the game is already pretty tough to begin with. The amount of times we see one lanes throw down the drain from misplays that aren't difficult or even require that much game knowledge is crazy. To show you what we mean, we're going to look at a few examples from our challenger expert McBays playing on a smurf in gold elo. In this first one, he's on Mundo against Kennen. Don't worry if you don't play any of the champions in the video, as the concepts will apply to anyone. But anyways, McBays has flash into EP, while Kennen has flash and ignite. On top of this, McBays has fleet footwork and door and shield. This is important, and we'll go over why in a bit. But this is a melee versus ranged matchup, and Mundo doesn't have a gap closer. So before level 6, it should be nearly impossible to kill this Kennen, right? Well, let's see what happens. Right off the bat, we have something small but useful. McBays started Q on Mundo, and Kennen started Q as well. They are basically the same ability, linear skill shots. That's why he makes Mundo walk up to here. This is basically max range of Kennen Q. This is normally when players will throw their skill shot, when you walk just into range and have no minions blocking like this. So what you want to do is walk into range, then preemptively move towards the wave in anticipation of the enemy's skill shot. This way, after Kennen throws his Q, McBase will then throw his Q second. Keep in mind, if you just walk up and did exactly what Kennen did, then you would just hit each other. This seems small, and it is in the scope of this one trade, but you will see how this adds up over time. Anyways, after that, we're getting into one of the main points of the video. Like we talked about earlier, you guys are making the game harder than it has to be. And here's our first example. So, McBay stands still and lets Kennen hit him with an auto attack, since he has Dorn Shield and Fleet, a lot of sustain. One auto from Kennen will be healed fast, and he will take minion aggro. Kennen should only be looking to hit Mundo when he walks up too far for a last hit, but he constantly takes the bait and autos McBay's no matter where he is. So, we just want to let this happen and let the minions do the work. And now that we notice that Kennen likes to overextend for harass, we're going to move to right around here. By standing here, if Kennen overextends for harass, he will be open to getting hit by McBase's Q. And as you can see, it works perfectly. We let Kennen auto attack us, so Kennen will take minion damage on top of the Q damage. There's a few things going on here though. Firstly, you need to know Kennen's auto attack range just like McBase does. This way, you can stand in a spot where Kennen will have to walk past his wave to auto attack. This will give you a window to land your Q. On top of this, notice McBase had minions in front of him the entire time, so the trade was never possible for Kennen to win. He's losing to himself. Overextending to force harass. This isn't complicated either. I'm sure Kennen watching this back could easily see how hard he's overextending. But this is why we're saying you're making the game harder than it needs to be. To wrap this point up, this shows the power of putting yourself in a spot where the enemy can make a mistake. We could have easily just sat in a brush or outside of Kennen's auto attack range the whole time, right? And be perfectly safe. But keep in mind, we're also perfectly safe with the way that we're playing. But at the same time, it also gives Kennen a chance to make a mistake by dangling that carrot in front of his face. Anyways, just a few seconds later, we use the exact same concept again, and surprise surprise, it works. And after landing this Q, McBase then stands in his caster minions and just lets Kennen auto attack him. Let's look at how much health both of them lost. Kennen went from 410 to 360, and Mundo went from 690 to 644, so they took about equal damage, right? But this is where the runes, items, and summoner spells become important. Kennen doesn't have natural sustain from Dorn Shield or Fleet Footwork, and doesn't have Teleport, so any damage he takes will stick once he's out of potions, whereas McBase will quickly heal that damage up. And I know you're probably thinking, well yeah, this is obvious and makes complete sense, but then why would Kennen auto-attack like this? Do you see what we're talking about now? Right after that though, we see another great example of this concept, making Kennen overextend and then punishing. We want to make sure we walk away to the point where Kennen will have to walk past the wave, and then hit him with Q. And with this one simple idea, we have a Mundo winning lane at level 1 in a matchup where that should never be possible. It's these small things that add up. Because Kennen overextended and got hit with Q, well, we can just go in and auto attack Kennen while he retreats, then once Kennen is too close to tower, well, we hit one last Q and back off. Something you might not have noticed though, was McBase's Q was up for a while there. But you've probably seen this in your own game, the enemy is just zigzagging back and forth. When this happens, you can just walk up and get free auto attack since they're not moving in a straight line. Keep in mind, we only would be able to use one Q in that time span anyways, so take the free auto attacks before Kennen is under tower, and then you want to finish with your Q. Anyways, at this point, Kennen is in trouble. The wave is pushing to us, he doesn't have teleport, and is really low, while McBase is very healthy. So, now we just have to focus on using E to poke Kennen, and using the same concept we talked about earlier. Look how well it works. Every time McBase stands at a distance where Kennen will have to walk up, he punishes with Q, and Kennen takes minion damage yet again as well. Now that we have enough small advantages, we can now transition into looking for a kill. So we pop our potion and wait for our E cooldown. Then we want to walk up and hit a minion into Kennen. Kennen flashes away, McBase misses Q, then flashes to finish him for the solo kill. So like we said at the start, Mundo should never ever be able to kill Kennen this early. 
Kennen is one of the strongest champions in the entire game in the first few levels, especially against melee champions like Mundo. But with this one trick of getting Kennen to overextend, well, he just got punished every time and eventually set up the kill. Before we get into the next matchup example, if you're finding this guide helpful, then you should definitely consider checking out our platform skill capped. Here, we have dozens of challenger made courses that teach you all of the little things you see in this video, which add up to huge advantages that would otherwise take years to learn by yourself. The best part is that it's risk free with our skill insurance. A guarantee you'll climb at least five divisions when actively using skill capped, otherwise you can claim your refund. So check us out after this, as there's literally zero risk. Anyways, let's look at another game, this time against a player who just loses to themselves. In this replay, McBaze is on Yone versus Warwick. Warwick top is no joke, it's very strong in lane, especially when they take barrier. This Warwick took barrier and ignite, no flash. So let's jump ahead to about here, where Warwick is crashing a big wave onto McBaze's tower. Warwick uses Demolish after crashing, takes a lot of damage since it's impossible for McBase to kill him alone right now. There's one thing everyone should know about Warwick though. He doesn't have any real gap closer without his ultimate since his Q is such a short range. So the main way he gets kills is to trick players. He gets low on health and then baits you trying to kill him. Moving forward though, McBase's jungler is coming around the corner, but he knows that Warwick warded the river and is just going to look to try and fight since he has no flash. It's his only option. Now keep in mind, in these spots, a lot of players make the mistake of just going aggressive and trading one for one. You don't want to do this, this is why we're going to play it slow. Once Master Yi is here, we can then go in with our E and third Q. But McBaze makes the classic greedy mistake of saving Ignite, so Warwick doesn't die. And the classic Warwick cheese starts, he turns the gank around and kills our Master Yi. Keep in mind though, we now know Warwick doesn't have any more summoner spells. So McBaze tries to use this timing window to finish him off before Warwick can heal off the wave or reset but Warwick's E actually comes up literally right as McBay's final Q hits, and so he dies as well. All right, so at this point, the lane would normally just be totally over. Warwick, the super strong laner, has two kills. McBay's used both summoner spells, and Warwick snowballs so hard on his own. On top of this, Warwick is almost level six, and McBay's is level four. But as we mentioned, what this Warwick is gonna do is the same thing that all you guys do. He's about to lose to himself. Let's see what happens. So we come back to lane and collect the wave, and we start slow pushing since Warwick is also on his way back and is going to be extremely strong. The problem is this big wave we're building up probably won't even be enough to defend McBaze at this point. So while McBaze contemplates his inevitable loss, well, surprisingly, Warwick appears on the minimap ganking bot lane. So now we can just push and work on plates naturally. Keep in mind, this gank bot lane actually costed Warwick an entire minute, but now that he's back in lane, he's looking to snowball his advantage and try to kill McBaze. So we make sure to kite away with our E when Warwick uses fear, and then snap back when it's done. But now we have another problem as Warwick hits 6 during this whole fight. So now McBaze is holding his third Q, and as soon as he sees Warwick start the animation, we're going to use that Q to cancel the Warwick R as it lands. Warwick keeps chasing though, and as soon as he's in range to use Q, McBaze preemptively uses R since he knows Warwick will jump to the other side of him. Alright, so obviously what just happened will require some mechanics and a good amount of knowledge of both champions, but that's not what's important. The important thing here is how Warwick had the lane completely crushed and won, no mechanics required, and he immediately threw it down the drain with a random roam to bot lane. Do not do this, ever. When you get a big lead in lane, you push that lead to the max. Then when the enemy laner is not punishable anymore because you took their tier 1 and it's too dangerous to go for that tier 2 tower for example, that's when you want to look to roam. Never give the enemy laner room to breathe like this. Like we said earlier, even if McBaze had a slow push of three waves, it still wouldn't be enough to save him from Warwick. We were in such a bad position, we wouldn't even been able to hit level six. But Warwick let him get two levels and play gold instead of coming straight back to lane and not letting McBaze play the game. And if all of this wasn't enough, well, Warwick wouldn't even come close to being gankable. These are the most painful throws where you guys are making the game so much harder than necessary. All right, let's see one last example. Here, McBaze is on Riven against a Zac top. Both of them have Flash and Ignite. Zac is kind of another cheesy pig like Warwick, but not as strong. The key to countering Zac though, is just stepping on his blobs if you can, as they give Zac a lot of health back. But at the start of the lane, Zac overextends for a trade. And since McBaze is on Riven, he can punish hard as Riven's level one is very good. This ends up with Zac using his Flash nice and early. At this point, we're going to hit level two really soon. So we want to try and bait Zac into walking up too far but unfortunately the timing was a bit unlucky from random minion aggro. Still, we get a nice level two chunk and Zac tries to trade back foolishly, but McBaze is greedy with the summoners yet again, this time with flash. So Zac doesn't fall into passive until he's under tower. If we had just used flash and then auto attack, it was a free kill. Just goes to show how important it is not to be too greedy with your summoner spells. The situation is drastically different now. 
Zac has a lot more health, he doesn't use mana, and has Dorn Shield, and a ton of natural sustain in his kit. We don't have teleport or any kind of sustain, and we basically have no health. So Zac naturally gets aggressive with his health advantage, while we play for our level 3. Keep in mind that recalling is really not an option right now, since the wave is pushing to Zac, as we would miss a ton of minions if we did. We can then see McBay's limit test a bit by grabbing the canyon, and is trying to figure out what to do here, as the situation is really tricky. Ultimately, the realization is that Zac can permanently freeze the wave with his sustain, and there's really no way of salvaging this, so he has to recall with the wave frozen. This is basically a lane losing scenario. All Zac has to do now is recall and walk back to lane, or if he doesn't know that, he just needs to realize his XP advantage is going to be huge. However, McBay's will have his gold spent, so Zac shouldn't fight McBay's until he takes a recall himself. Well, as soon as we get back to lane, Zac of course makes the mistake of trying to fight right away, and almost dies. He's just throwing this massive lead down the drain right away, just like the Warwick. And at this point, Zac has no way of getting a recall, and is in a spot where someone that knows what they're doing will punish them hard. What we're going to do is not let Zac recall without losing a lot somewhere, somehow. Basically, now the lane losing scenario we were just in is flipped. So, once our Ignite comes back up, we want to jump in on the Zac and get that kill using our gold that we spent to get an item advantage. Again, a lane that is completely smashed and one for the enemy, but they just immediately throw it since they tunnel way too much on getting kills and forcing plays. The answers are simple, don't make it so hard. Alright guys, so hopefully these examples reminded you of some of the mistakes you're making in your own games and how you can fix them. But that's going to wrap it up for this video, we hope you enjoyed it, and we'll catch you in the next one.